A lot of what Bill just uh, talked about, we have incorporated into our program at Wollongong, and that comes about by attending some of these conferences in the past and doing a lot of benchmarking with different councils. We launched our program on the 3rd of March uh, 2011, and Bill kindly made the trip up from Canberra to launch our program at the Cornwall Men's Shed, and I'll talk a bit, bit more about them in a moment. But uh, what I really want to stress through this very brief presentation is the importance of getting the framework right within local government. It's all about structure, it's about framework, it's about integration. And, and there are so many opportunities within local government to integrate pest management programs, whether they be for deer, foxes, rabbits, minor birds, into other aspects of what we call core business within local government. It was during 2010 that we were working busily on policy and, um, and we had a, um, a, a committee of council called the Pest Animal Advisory Group made up, which had representation from Animal Welfare, RSPCA, uh, Parks and Wildlife, Police, Game Council, you name it that we were busy putting the policy and say the management plans and so forth together that uh, this, uh, this little headline came up and it was, it really put the, the wind in our sails because this was on page one and two of the local paper in the Illawarra, it was about this DIY approach. It was very much written about two, they thought it was about Wollong Council, we hadn't launched our program at that time, it was about Shell Haven Council and Shell Harbour Council and very much, you know, council's producing a, a brochure and saying, go to the men's shed, get a trap and see you later. And it was very clear at that point that this is just not, not going to be good enough. And we really then uh, went to work on how do we integrate a program that uh, is anything but DIY, that covers all the bases that, uh, that we want our program to cover. Um, and you can see on page two, we went down and talking about uh, the various you know, euthanizing uh, components of, of birds in some of the major hotspot areas within the Illawarra. So I don't know where they got this information from because our program wasn't launched at that stage, but um, what, we, what we set about doing is developing our objectives for the program. And you'll see a lot of what Bill spoke about, how we've integrated into ours. Reducing breeding, feeding, risking opportunities, conducting a humane trapping program that was, had to be acceptable to the community, to council and to animal welfare agencies. And for us, the big one was the, um, the, the monitoring and the research. So uh, we went about, we set about uh, with those broad aims in developing um, our program, but prior to the program, we had, uh, we had a policy established. We have a number of pest species in the Illawarra. Deer are our number one pest, but uh, the pest policy had to incorporate um, all, all our pests. So there's a, there's a, a base, a, a policy base to work from. Uh, we then set about developing management plans for the various pest species that we were going to do works with and this is getting a bit into uh, what Peter Bird was talking about in terms of identifying the social, economic and environmental impacts, doing a risk matrix, um, a risk assessment rather on those various pest species and, and then ranking them in, in a various um, in a hierarchy. We did this all under the auspice of, the, of PAG, the Pest Animal Advisory Group and we also then developed the program and the program uh, that we've developed in Wollongong has a number of components. The first one's community engagement, of course, and I'll talk a bit more about that. Um, our program has got, uh, it's a bit of a different structure in that participants in our program come to a workshop rather than um, making traps or hiring a trap. You come to a workshop about an hour, an hour and a half, and we impart a lot of information that's important in terms, not only successful trapping, but particularly in terms of the monitoring and the research uh, component. There's always an administration component to our, a program such as this, databases and so forth. The men's shed, we wouldn't have a program without the men's shed because they make and sell the traps. We've got a, a sample of their trap outside, it's that round trap. Uh, the men's shed um, make those. They're also making nesting boxes for us at the moment. You probably see a nesting box out there with a drop down bottom. It's a, nesting, it's a parrot nesting box that we're hoping to, to double up as a, as a trap as well. Monitoring is uh, a really key component of the program and we spend a lot of time at the workshop talking about monitoring and minor scans is definitely a part of this and of course research and uh, Dr Ricky Spence is here today uh, from the University of Western Sydney who along with Gonzalo Moralda is conducting a two-year um, two study and research project for us on, on the minor problem in the Wollongong area. With the community engagement, as Bill was mentioning, promotion and community engagement is continuous. Uh, Ricky and I just did a uh, ABC um, interview a few weeks back and that generated a lot of uh, publicity both um, in, on radio and in print media. But you're continually working on promoting your program. Uh, the website, which we have at Council, has also got a lot of the information that we have. We're you know, producing newsletters such as this that goes out to all the participants in the program. 
Uh, the workshop, of course, requires um, you know, constant updates as well uh, and euthanizing support. Key, a key component of our program and one of the issues that we want to get away from this DIY approach is we provide a support mechanism for euthanizing and the men's shed kindly have produced a euthanizing chamber for us which those traps fit straight into. So anyone who doesn't want to euthanize the birds bring them to us five days a week and we will euthanize the birds for you and also dispose of the birds as well. Database, with administration, database management and resourcing and funding and reporting back to PAG because we have to report our, um, our um, outcomes on a, on a quarterly basis to, to PAG. Newsletters, distribution, feedback, all key components of, of, uh, of the administrative component of this program. Um, the men's shed, they supply the traps and nesting boxes and they're linked in with the program as well. You cannot go to the men's shed and just say I want a trap. The men's shed know very well that you need to come to a workshop first and we have a, a form of signing on. You sign a little protocol at the end of the workshop saying you've received all the instruction in terms of trapping and humane disposal of the bird. Once we get that form back off you, you get a form back saying, well, you can go to the men's shed and buy a trap. And the men's shed come to our workshops and they sell the traps at the workshop. So it works out well. And as Bill mentioned, you can't expect people to pay hundreds of dollars for a trap. It's crazy. They, $50, people are quite happy to, to pay that. Um, the monitoring, uh, capture and data signing sheets, uh, which they're provided with, three monthly signing sheets. We provide them with a, an incentive for every three months uh, data we get back. You get four free plants from the Botanic Garden. So there's an incentive to send these back because this data is going straight back into the research. And we are also updating that information into minor scans for the participants. If they want to do it themselves, that's fine. Just tick the box telling us that you've done that. But if not, we will update that information on a, on a spreadsheet. We're not going individually into people's addresses, which has got there's a spreadsheet component in minor scans that allows us to update um, the, the, the information. Uh, resident feedback is really important. This is where the newsletters come in handy. And uh, Ricky and I were just talking during the break about how we can even uh, provide information about suburbs and capture rates and sighting, sheet and sighting data, various suburbs. And, uh, and minor scans also, you know, for those people who are inclined to um, participate with that, that's great. We encourage that and we support it and we show them how to do it at the workshop as well. The research project, uh, we're about halfway through. Um, really important uh, information and key component of this program. Uh, we need science and we need to support science and we, we, we are doing that. Um, we attend forums and conferences like this, of course, and, and we support other local governments. We've had a number of councils come to us and just, you know, doing what I did a few years back and just benchmark and have, uh, have um, the program provided to them. And anyone who wants to have a look at our program or get a copy of the workshop presentation that we do, we're more than happy to share that. At the workshop, we go through these, uh, these particular topics. We, we look at just an overview on pest species. The terrific uh, current affair article that was recorded out here last year with Bill is, is gold for us. We put that up because it's kind of a beautiful summary all in one uh, five minute presentation that we, we include in our workshop. We talk about minor bird biology, social organisation, impacts, environmental, social, economic. We talk about trapping and all the welfare protocols around trapping. We, um, we explain to people where the men's shed is and the men's shed are there and we talk about the men's shed component to this program and, and the nesting boxes. We spend a fair bit of time talking about monitoring and the need for monitoring. Sighting data and trapping data is, is really important. And then, of course, euthanizing and explain to people what's legal and what's not and, and the support that we offer and what they, what they can do if they want um, support. And you hear every conceivable way of euthanizing these poor creatures, but um, we just stress that, look, um, um, the Prevention of Cruel Animals Act applies to, you know, Brumbies as much as, much as it does to, to um, to monitor birds and, and to be mindful that you know you need to be there to monitor your trap. Don't leave birds in the trap overnight, they'll die, for example, and 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 how susceptible they are, as we are, to any inhumane um, treatment of these birds. So we really stress that. Um, and reading the gong of a summer one pest, well not really. Number one pest in Wollongong is a deer by by a long way. But certainly the number one pest in terms of complaints. And this leads or feeds back into some of the information that we've been hearing today about the social aspects of, um, of these birds. But increasingly, as the science comes out, and Kate's research has been terrific from that point of view, providing more, more information about the, the environmental impacts as well. So that's what I wanted to quickly touch on. Um, the important thing is to have within your council the, the right structure 
and, and policy and program development is, is, is really vital. Once you've got that basis down, then you can go out there and start promoting the program and, and engaging the community. Thank you.